Hello everyone, today I'm going to have a look at the Battle of Prague from Clash of Arms Games. This is Volume 8 in their Battles from the Age of Reason uh, series. Okay, quite an attractive box. Period picture on the front. Have a look at the back. Nice colour pictures of the counters, maps, the Lobosix extension map. Okay, quite nicely done. Printed in the USA. Okay. So, let's have a look what's in the box. First of all, we have the Battles from the Age of Reason rules of play. Uh, these are generic rules for the entire system, and the system covers Seven Years' War, American War of Independence, War of the Austrian Succession battles, basically 18th century warfare. They're quite detailed tactical rules, but I found them very, very clear. I've been playing the system for quite a while. This is the third edition. Uh, one thing I found is generally everything's in there. Okay, sometimes it takes you a little while to find it, but uh, the rules are very, very good. Okay, so along with that, we've also got the battle rules for Prague itself. Okay, these are the rules for this particular battle. Uh, you can see some of the markers they used, some of the description of what the counters have got on them. Uh, the legend here for the different nationalities. So when you look at a counter, you can actually see, well, it's Austrian infantry or Prussian infantry or grenadiers. Okay, it's on the back of the counter. Uh, descriptions of the battle itself, historical commentary, various different scenarios, so you don't have to play the full thing because it's a three mapper, so the full thing is quite, uh, quite a lot to go at. Special rules, optional rules, descriptions of the leaders and any special capabilities they've got. Okay, then we come to the counters. Now, the counters in the BAR series are some of the best that you will see. Uh, they're based on actual uniforms. So facings, buttons, all this sort of stuff. Uh, you know, you can see your cavalry up here, hussar type uniforms. Uh, you've got your infantry here. Now, one thing you won't be able to tell just from looking at this, probably uh, from this picture, is that there's actually a slightly different font used from the Prussian side to the Austrian side on the front to help make them easier to identify. But obviously in this case, the Prussians are generally in blue and the Austrians are generally in white. It doesn't always work that way, depending on the scenario and the different uh, countries included. On the back you've got more information. Uh, I'll just hold it this way. You can see how good they are in combat, what their morale is, things like that. Okay, And you've got leaders. Uh, you get replacement leaders as well because leaders will sometimes get killed. Second sheet there, again, beautiful counters, really nicely done. Uh, lots of uh, interesting information. You've got field works here, light and heavy field works. You've got artillery. Uh, so I don't think anybody can complain about the quality of the counters in this. And a couple of very boring looking generic counter sheets for markers. Okay, so you can put these markers on to show how much damage people have taken, when people are shaken, uh, when they're creating hooks in the line, when they're in column. Okay, disorder, extended lines, things like that when people are routed. Now, like I said, this is a three mapper, so it's going to take up quite a lot of space if you want to play the full thing. Uh, I've played a few of the previous ones, but I think the biggest I've done before is a two mapper, so three maps is going to be a bit difficult to get on. The maps, as usual, are very nicely done. I would actually say that in the past, some of the BAR maps have been a little bit difficult to read. Uh, not vague, you might say, but uh, certainly you need a close look at them sometimes to spot uh, terrain adjustments. Uh, this one seems to be the clearest, I think, that they've done so far. So uh, you shouldn't have any difficulty playing this one. Nice, not too colourful, uh, but not plain white either. So, like I say, three maps, all to this quality. Uh, I think if you can get this set up on the table with the counters on it, it's going to look very, very attractive. Uh, I won't bother showing you the last map because it's more of the same. Okay, so the water on it, that's the north map. Okay, the next thing you get is orders of battle. Now, command and control is quite important in the system, so you need to know who's in charge, who they're in charge of, and what units they've got uh, under their command as well. So there's the Austrians uh, under Prince Charles. 
Okay, and you've got some independent units, cavalry commands, artillery. And obviously, you've also got the Prussian one as well. Okay, King Frederick II. Yep, there he is. Okay, again, beautifully done, full colour, uh, nice classic look to it. Now, one of the things you get, because it's a tactical system, you get formations. Uh, your guys can be in line, they can be in column, they can be skirmishes, they can be in general order, they can be in squares. This is pre-Napoleonic, don't forget, but uh, formations are still a pretty important part of uh, setting up your troops. And here it shows you, you know, the way that you can move from one to another. Okay, also down here, when you want to change facing, how much it costs to change facing. Okay, on the back... You've got more formation change diagrams. So let's say you're going from a 2x line to a 2x march column. How many movement points it costs you, depending on where you start and where you end up. It does matter. Uh, you when you change your formation, depending on which direction you're going in, it will actually affect how many uh, movement points it's going to cost you. Okay, now you've got an off-map display. Uh, you can move troops off-map, so they can come on at the edge of the board somewhere. Okay. Uh, next one up is charts and tables. Okay. Now, special results. This is quite interesting. There's lots of ways of getting special results in this game. You can get wildfire. You can get full volley, where you double the fire strength. You can get command confusion. You can get the army morale uh, needs to be checked. And that's how you win the battle, by reducing your enemy's army's morale. Uh, so there's quite a lot of sort of random events. You've got a close combat results table. Okay, based on odds, uh, you've got fire combat results table, again based on odds, description of how to set up a hook, things like that, disorder check results, any you know special information that you need, morale check results. Okay. The thing you've got, you've got loss charts. Now if you don't want to put the counters underneath, or if you want to do both, you can actually start checking the damage off as, as uh, units take damage here. Uh, so you can just look at the sheet and see how much somebody's got left. Separate close combat result there, uh, table there. You're going to be using that quite a lot, so they've put that on a separate sheet, make it easier. Okay, and the fire combat as well, because again, that's going to be used quite a lot. Turn record track. Uh, the turn ends are variable, so you won't necessarily be able to exactly work out when something's going to end. Both sides roll initiative, whoever gets the initiative gets to do something. Uh, depending on the result, it's possible that the turn will end. Okay, and as the turn goes on, it's more and more likely to end. Here we go, Austrian army uh, lost charts, army morale for the Prussian army, army morale for the Austrian army. These are suitable for photocopying, so if you do want to use that system, photocopy those and uh, make as many copies as you like. Now, one bonus thing you get in this, if you've already got Lobosits, which I'd highly recommend, is there's an expansion kit for it. Uh, Lobosits is another excellent game in this series. Uh, obviously this is going to look pretty similar to the Prague one, but uh, based on a different battle. Now, you can't play Lobosits obviously straight out of this box, you need to win the game already, but what you get is some updated information, uh, the updated book, turn record chat, chart, and you actually get a whole extra map. So you've got a lot more room to manoeuvre, so you get an extra south map. It doesn't look very big, but it just gives you that bit more room to manoeuvre so you don't feel so quite so hemmed in. Now, if you've not played the Battle for the Age of Reason uh, series, it's something you might be interested in. Don't be put off by the rules complexity. If you like tactical uh, battles, if you like Napoleonic, but you thought you want to try something different, I uh, definitely highly recommend it. Uh, it's one of the few series of games that I've kept every one. I did get rid of them at one time and then regretted it bitterly, and so I've gone through a phase of picking them all back up again. Uh, I think you'll find it's probably the best tactical system out there for this sort of period. I certainly prefer it to their Le Bataille series, which I think has got a little bit muddled now. Uh, I think if they took this system and modified it to work to Napoleonic, then uh, they'd end up with a much better system. Uh, and wouldn't have three different sets of rules. So I hope you've enjoyed seeing what's inside the box. Thanks very much for watching. Goodbye.